guys, let's talk about some of the basics of perspective. So to begin with, we have to agree on a couple of really just basic definitions. Uh, first off, let's assume that uh, we have a horizon, or actually just not the horizon, but the ground, right? And you're standing here. Here's you. Here's your eyeballs. And going off into the distance, you are looking out on the world. So, right? Makes sense. Now here we have a couple of the uh, first things that we care about. Number one, we have the ground. We have what's going to be known as the station point. We have your eyeballs, and really since that's where all of the stuff that you see comes from, uh, we're going to call that the viewer. And you can call this something like the painter or uh, the viewpoint as well. But the important thing to know is that your eyeballs are what we care about. And your eyeballs are X amount of distance from your station point. So in this case, it's about six feet, let's say. Uh, people are different heights, five feet, six feet, seven feet. Small children are only three feet. But for our purposes, we're going to assume everyone is six feet tall. And looking out from here, we have what is known as our line of sight. Now, until you start doing more advanced uh, aspects of perspective, we're going to assume a couple things about the line of sight. Number one, we're going to assume that your line of sight is parallel to the ground. And we're also going to assume that they both travel infinitely. So like it's like we're in Tron or something. Now, the, tr the truth of the matter is uh, it doesn't travel infinitely. What we end up seeing is here's you standing, and you're looking out, and the ground is going like this. And eventually, we have the curvature of the Earth, and your eye keeps going. But we start to see that curvature of the Earth, and the stuff ends. And that's called the horizon. We see that end of stuff. But it happens so far off in the distance that for as long as we care to imagine, we're actually just traveling in a straight line against straight ground. Now, let's assume that here on this example, we have a series of posts, and we don't have to be too specific about it. But assume that they're about the same height, and they're traveling the same distance. So I'm just guesstimating here. erase some of these these notes here. So for our purposes, we are assuming this travels forever. And we have a series of lines that are approximately the same height and approximately the same distance. We're just guesstimating. And they travel really, really far. Am I still recording? My cat just pushed the power button on my computer. Here, try. So way off in the distance even, we have something like this. Let's just draw some angles from the various points on this to our line of sight. So way over here at this one, we have a line of sight that goes from your eyeball all the way down to this bottom point, right? And look at the angle on this. It's really, really extreme. If this is us right here, and this is the line of this post that's here on the side, these are practically parallel to each other. I mean, not quite, but really, really close, right? Now, just one post over, we actually double the angle 
Look at how much this angle changes. All of a sudden, we're at about a 45 degree angle. And every single post from here is going to get more and more extreme, but very quickly turn into almost parallel to the horizon. So this is, if our person is 6 feet, right around here is 6 feet. So right around here is 12 feet. So only like 20 feet away. Boom, look at that. Just 20 feet away. And how's that 20 feet? 6, 12, 18. Something like that. But just 20 feet away, we're already seeing a situation where this ray from the bottom of that post is already almost parallel to the line of sight. And way over here, it gets even more extreme. So these are going to keep going until they hit the horizon. And basically, they're so far off that we stop being able to see them. But the point of the matter is that as things get towards the horizon, they're going to appear closer and closer together. Now, the theory of perspective is that given this scenario, let's say, I mean, these are not the prettiest lines, but assume that I had a glass plane here, right? It goes from there. It's like a window that you're looking at. And if we took this window and we held it really close to our face, it would bisect all these rays. Actually, let's go all the way down. Some of which are even beyond our sight. And where it bisects is going to be X, Y, Z on this plane. Now, if we moved that way over here, and instead we bisected here, the important thing to know is that the ratios between these rays are going to be the same, as in from the top of this to this bottom ray, like, or let's say like right here, and this horizon, it's going to be the same as here and here and here. These ratios are going to remain the same. The ratio of this to this, let's say that's 1 to 2, it's going to be the same if you travel up and consider that to that, this to this. Now, how does this affect when, what we actually see? Well, let's uh, build this up with white. And let's craft those two around there. The way we would see that line of poles, if we had a horizon. So here's our horizon. Actually, let's put it a little high up. Is that... they would all converge at what's known as the principal vanishing point. Principal vanishing point. Or PVP for short. AKA PVP. And the important thing about the principal vanishing point is remember that that line of sight, like Cyclops, is coming right out of your eyeball and it's parallel to the ground. And from a top view, you could see this as, let's, let's do a quick top view. Here's you. We're also assuming that that ray going out, uh, the post could be right under it, or perhaps they're right next to it. So maybe it's like, there's a post, there's a post, there's a post, what have you. But what we care about in this analogy is that these posts are actually on a straight line and parallel to us. So maybe this is one, this is one, over here. And this line is parallel to this line. So given that, they're going to appear to converge on our principal vanishing point. And I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to use a little uh, drawing assistant. Uh, I don't necessarily think this is required. And you know what? Having drawing assistance in no way makes it so that you will draw correctly. A lot of people, if they don't understand the rules of perspective, they can have all the drawing assistance they want, and it's not going to do them anything. So let's say our drawing goes like from there. And then these posts are yay high. 
So our first post is going to go from here to here. Our second one is going to go from here to here. And they will appear to get smaller as they go back. But because they're all the same height, they're going to keep going back and back and back. And they're all going to cut through there. Now the same is true if we imagine that instead of, again, here's our top view. Let me just uh, erase some of this nonsense. So here's our top view. And again, we have this line going out infinitely. And let's say instead of that, we have two parallel lines that are marking the endpoints of some railroad ties. So, like from there to, I don't know. There. So imagine you have some railroad ties and they go straight up and down from one of these lines to another. We don't really care about how far they are because we're just covering how they basically recede to the background, right? We do have a couple of mathematical truths though. Number one, these are exactly perpendicular to our line of sight. As in, if here's our line of sight, and here's our railroads on their bases, <coughs> from here, these end up being exactly 90 degrees. So perpendicular and parallel things are the primary thing you use principal vanishing point, or one point perspective for. Now the way we see this in our model down here, is let's just draw, uh, let's turn the assistant back on. And let's say we go from there that's not what I want, to around there. So there's the distance between our railroad spikes, right? So they're going to be they're always going to touch these two sides and they're going to appear to converge on that principal vanishing point. And again, I'm freehanding these. But as a general rule, in the same way that these ones are going to get smaller and appear closer and closer together, whereas these ones up here have a lot of distortion that makes them seem far apart, these are also going to get closer and closer together until they appear to be practically right on top of each other as they get towards that horizon. And note that we can also see that all of these are exactly parallel to our horizon in this. In fact, if we cut this, we once again see some mathematical truth. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 180 degrees. So this is just the starting ideas of uh, one point perspective. And hopefully you got some of these uh, core ideas across, namely Principal vanishing point. Wow, this text is big. So again, our big ideas that we have to remember is terminology are uh, the viewer. 
the station point the horizon the line of sight and the PVP and just also remember the rule that things converge on the horizon They literally appear to vanish, hence the term vanishing point. Next up, we're going to talk about two-point perspective and a little bit more complex math.